Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. It's been a hot minute since I've done a video up here, but lo and behold we've got a new thing finally. The new class 143 Pacer by Backman slash EFE Rail. So let's get it out of the box. Now before we start jabbering about this model, I will say, if Real Track bothered to make more GWR green ones, I would have bought one of those. But they didn't, so now I've got this one. Ordered this with Kerno, arrived nice and promptly via Raw Mail, maybe less than an hour ago. And now we get to have a play with it. Now, as I understand, this isn't Real Track Models uh, tooling. So, it remains to be seen who this actually is, if it was some kind of freeware thing that Backman have made and customised themselves or something else. Now I will say I got this out down in the house and some things to note. First of all on this coach, the non-motorised one, much lighter of course, there was some kind of splodge here, a very obvious stain from some kind of watery substance. Came off with a bit of rubbing and uh, some water so Nothing too major, but I mean, some kind of quality control, please, lads. People have complained about the weathering. I don't think it's too bad on this model, considering it's a dark livery. And I'd say that's an apt amount of weathering for the yellow panel. It's out of, that's how I really remember them looking when I was sitting along the Dawlish seawall as they went by. Definitely some grime on them during the summer months, flying into plenty of bugs flying around and such alike. Packaging's obviously the usual ice cube stuff, does the job. Uh, you may have noticed I'm not explaining what the pacer is. I take it if you're watching this video you're thinking about buying one so you already know what one is. In short, it's an abomination. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're diesel multiple units made out of bus bodies, basically. Right, and the other thing to note, now that I've got this one out, and you can still see some residue on the bottom. <laughs> The housing for the axles, please autofocus, there we go, you can see some grease there. They were covered in grease, so not sure how well, well, lubricated these are, but uh, I take it they are well lubricated, um, maybe over lubricated in such a case, which is a rarity nowadays because they're usually under lubricated using some kind of crap cheap solid grease. Unlike the you know proper stuff you can actually buy at your local retailer. Um, you know what, I take it back, this uh, ice cube packaging is being rather stiff and stubborn and a pain and it's not, why is it not securing properly? It's not, why? Why is that not securing properly? It's going to be horribly obvious in a few minutes why it isn't. Probably. Maybe. Oh, that's why. Yep, <laughs> it's just me being stupid. I was pushing it down too t uh, too far, so it wouldn't go in properly. So let's see how these connect, because that's going to be an important bit of your multiple units. It is an eight-pin plug to connect your multiple unit. Let's see how easy that is. Line them up, try not to bend the pins in any way. Uh, how does this actually connect? Wow. So that lines up there. Okay, that connects relatively easily. And that's it, that's together. There's your full train. Let's put the box away. I suppose we should also have a look at the instructions real quickly. Uh, let's see. Such and such about sound fitting. And yeah, there we go. Open the covers, lubricate your gears. Seems to be already lubricated very well. If it isn't, I'm going to be thoroughly disappointed. And a massive parts list. No less than second radius. That's fair enough. And the box is substantial enough, I'd say. It's 
quite good. So let's move this out of the way. Right, let's have a quick jump cut and I'll get this on a rolling road so we can see what the lighting and motor noise is like. So I've got my little controller here and let's give her some power. Motor noise is quiet enough. Lights look plenty powerful. We've got rear lights on that end and definitely see the destination board and maybe some faint headlights on the end that's closest to you. That's relatively quiet actually. I was expecting it to be noisier. And we send it the other way. Headlights and destination board on that end and definitely tail lights on the end closest. I think it's best to show those by getting the camera off the tripod, so let's do that. So now that we're up close you can see the lit destination board and the headlights on this end. Lighting looks plenty fine. I don't see any light bleed along the body which some people have uh, had issues with. I think that's probably helped by this being a darker livery to uh, work with. And on this end, yes, yeah, some tail lights. Sweet as. Right, so let's actually get this on the track and see what it's like handling uh, some of the curves and points on this layout. So the first trial is getting out of the yard, so it's going to have to negotiate a double slip and a curved point. So let's give it some power. Take it relatively slow. There we go. Ooh, okay. That's a bit concerning, maybe. What is, what is it like at speed? Ooh. Okay, it doesn't seem to like this double slip. Maybe due to picking up power, but the lights don't flicker at all. That's interesting. Let's give it another go. I'd say that's either maybe due to the the nature of the non-bogied axles and picking up power. Okay, well that's interesting, that's something to note. So it seems to not like the double slips, let's test it on the express points. Does the express points perfectly fine, as, the, uh, as it should. Runs very quietly for the fact the uh, motor is underneath the floor in this model because you've got to hide it due to it being a multiple unit. Runs perfectly fine. Just before we test a, uh, another set of points, and it will be the final set of points to test, which is the uh, three-way, um, I wanted to check what pickups are on the bottom of this, and there's actually pickups on all axles on this model, as it should be. So I'm thinking that might be more of a radius thing um, or struggling to pick up power over the double slip, which I find sort of strange, but also not at the same time. Because, okay, it makes a bit of sense considering these are single axles, uh, and there's only, what, four wheels per coach. Um, but the thing about that is one coach pretty much at all times is not on that double slip, so it shouldn't really have a pickup issue, so I'm thinking it is a radius issue. That's just something to note if you have a double slip on your layout. Now as I just said the final test is going to be over this uh, three-way point that leads into the station. So let's have a look at it and 
see how well it handles it. Same sort of issue as the double slip, that's interesting. And this is a good point to point out the comparison in colour of the weathered version versus Hornby Mark 3s. You notice it is definitely darker and you can definitely see the weathering when it's in comparison to other uh, GWR liveried examples of items. So now that we've seen that, I'd say we get some uh, eye level footage uh, of this running around the layout. So that's Backman's slash EFE's class 143 Pacer. I'd say the weathering isn't as heavy as the uh, initial photos showed, uh, which is good. I think that's probably helped due to the dark livery, so it doesn't show up as much. Uh, the livery application is great. Um, this has been a nice little missing link to fill uh, in the... Um, GWR range. I'm well aware that Real Track models did their own green GWR pacer, and whether that was only limited to 200 models, I believe. So, if I could have got one, I would have. However, this has come along, so I bought this one instead. Uh, the motor noise when it's going around the layout is very quiet. Um, I'd say it's really, really good and up to the usual Batman standard of a nice, quiet model straight out of the box. Could do with some running in, I'd say. Um, and to be honest, I think it could benefit from DCC fitting because uh, of the light flicker and um, the few amount of axles to uh, pick up off of, um, which is just something that comes with the, um, the, <laughs> the train that you're modeling um, because you can't really help that there's so few so few axles on this because it's a pacer it has very few axles um, slow speed running does leave a little bit to be desired so again DCC with the capacitor um, just to smooth it out um, I did run this model over the triple point and the double slip again uh, at a higher speed and there were no issues so I think it is just sort of slow to mid speed running over those points so I think it is something to do with the radius it's taking slash the pickups um, that will be something I'll have to look at 
Um, would I recommend you get this model? Now, this model cost £216 um, from Kerno Model Rail Centre. Would I recommend you get this for £216? If you really want a pacer and you couldn't get the real track models one you wanted, yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it's the biggest standout thing in the world, so don't go and rush and get one. Um, if this is your thing, it completes your Arriva, Regional Railways, Transport for Wales, GWR sort of theme for what you're modelling, sure. Do it, it's a great little addition to your GWR or whatever you have fleet. Um, what more is there to say on this? The lights are nice and bright. Um, the interior looks quite well done. Could do with some passengers fitted in there and a driver. Um, I've seen plenty of people complain about the weathering, uh, that it's monotone. I think it looks fine and monotone on this livery. Um, it dulls it down just enough where you can, you know, it doesn't really change the color too much. And I'd say there's plenty well just just enough weathering on the yellow end um to sort of what i remember them looking like on the Dawlish seawall um the eight pin connector to connect the two is nice and easy to put together um and it's very easy to get on the track run it straight from the box uh the headlights i think could maybe be a little brighter but Mm, you can't have everything on a model like this but for the price you're paying I'd say that's enough to demand some nice bright headlights um, but that may change once I probably DCC fit this sound fit this um, it's a next 18 decoder so sound fitting should be quite easy I don't know if this has a from the factory sugar cube or not I doubt it somehow um, although Backman have liked to do that more recently, especially with their, uh, oh, was it was it Backman? It might have been Backman or Rapido, who um, did a from the factory sugar cube, because then all you had to do was plug in the sound decoder and you were away. So again, now that we've covered all that, it's pretty much down to you whether you get one of these. Uh, if you have been looking for one of these for quite a while, I suggest you grab one up. If not, um, there's better DMUs out there. I'd say the Backman 158 is a great one, but that's very pricey. Uh, if you can get a Hornby 153, the single car um, DMU in GWR livery that is a really nice model with a good weight to it very smooth running um, I'd recommend you get one of those and there's also the Backman 150 which I believe they've also done in the purple uh, livery of the first first great western um, so you could pick one of those up as well there are other DMU options in terms of GWR um, but if you're after a pacer this certainly um, ticks the boxes. Uh, if you have any questions about this model, um, leave a comment. Uh, I'll be sure to answer the question if I can. Um, I think there might be some things I've missed here and there. The tension locks stick out quite a way, but um, I think they, they look okay. They're fine. There were some dummy couplers, I think they were, in the box so it might be worth fitting those if you don't plan to run this with another DMU in multiple um, anyway yes that's been the EFE slash Backman class 143 in GWR green livery I hope you enjoyed the video again leave a comment uh, if you've got any questions and I'll be sure to get back to them if I can answer them and until the next time we're in the shed goodbye